So now it is my honor to welcome Michelle Willems, who will be leading our conversation called The Culture is Visual, Hip Hop Photography. Please join me in welcoming Michelle Willems, my former colleague at Honey Magazine many, many moons ago. Thank you. Mic check. Be all hip hop about it. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. It's hip hop in the building. Okay. Um, hello, and welcome to the Culture is Visual Hip Hop Photography. I'm so happy to be here on Columbia grounds. Um, I too thank you, Minya, for talking about KCR. Uh, probably the last time I was here was early 90s sneaking in the side door to go up to a radio show <laughs> with Stretch and Bob and probably Sue um, in the middle of a Thursday night to you know eat some donuts and you know giggle in the background while they were doing a radio show um, so thank you for giving us this space and time to talk about some pictures. I'm going to be your hostess this hour. I've been a fan of hip hop since um, I was an extra in Crush Groove when I attended FIT. Yes, that's, that's how old I am. <laughs> and I saw Run DMC perform live um, during uh, one of the scenes that I was an extra in. And that was it for me. That kind of sealed the deal to see that energy and uh, they performed It's Tricky, and I think I blacked out at that point. So that was it for me. And then as far as photography, as a kid growing up in a house with a lot of music playing and album covers and being fascinated by all the pictures, and you know, I, I just developed this love for photography and, and how it tells a story. And I'm just really excited to have the four people on our panel today that we have. So I want to jump right in because we don't have like a ton of time, but we do have eight of the most amazing eyeballs inside of four really talented human beings. Um, I would like to bring them up to the stage one at a time. Uh, first, please help me welcome Martha Cooper. <laughs> Legendary Martha Cooper. Sit anywhere you like. Grab a mic. Um, Mel D. Cole, please welcome Mel to the stage. Sue Kwan, the woman who looped me into this <laughs> with Elizabeth, and Ernie Panicoli, legend and icon. Test, test, so test. everybody can take a seat, grab a mic, yeah. get comfy, pour some bubbly. I think it's water, but it might be bubbly water. We're going to just have a really fun conversation. Um, while Ernie's getting settled, I'm going to introduce Martha first. Uh, Martha has been taking pictures since age three, and that's not even like an exaggeration. Her dad and her uncle had a camera shop in Baltimore where she grew up. Um, so you did tell me that you did take your first picture when you were three years old. Or maybe two. Or maybe two. I, I think it, turn your mic on. Yeah. Do it, let's do a mic check for you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? You yeah. got your bars on. Okay. So from uh, that was your first your first picture is when you were super young, and then from we're gonna jump to 1977 to 80. You were a staff photographer at the New York Post, right. um, and that is when you discovered graffiti and you began documenting it as a part of your life's work. Um, and and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And you've also published numerous books and magazines and articles, not magazines, but articles about graffiti and breaking. And a fun fact is that her complete body of work has recently been acquired by the Library of Congress, which I think is <laughs> worth a huge round of applause because that's unbelievable so congratulations on that as Thank well um, so the first images that we have up on the screen um, we're going to talk a little bit about and I think this kind of shows us your origins of how you 
discovered graffiti and yeah. like that's what I wanted to talk about like for one of the things we spoke about is like do you remember the first time you discovered graffiti or the first picture that you took of a uh, graffiti and how that led you into um, you know kind of following it and and making it part of your your um, your life's work and your project so if you could share that with us um, a little well the words hip-hop were not even being used back in the 70s when I first started uh, shooting graffiti. Right. So I didn't go at it thinking, oh, I'm gonna document hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working for the New York Post and I went on vacation to Haiti and I saw, and that's what the first picture over there is. In the top left. I saw kids playing with toys that they had made themselves from tin cans and bottles and things. And I decided that when I went, came back to New York, I would look for kids um, on the Lower East Side, because that's where the post was located, uh, who were doing the same thing. And so I started a project, uh, and I found a lot of kids that were making things in these vast, bombed out areas, which is now the East Village, uh, making things from trash, like those carts that they're racing up there. Mm -hmm. And while I was working on that project, I met a boy, this boy, who showed me his notebook of drawings and said, why don't you take pictures of graffiti? And his graffiti name was He Three. You can see it says He Three. And he showed me a wall that he had painted and said, I can introduce you to a king. And that was irresistible. Oh, who <laughs> is the king? So <laughs> he got in my car, we drove out to East New York and he inter he, we knocked on the door and it was Dondi's door. And he introduced me to Dondi, like boom, wow. right away. And Dondi turned out to be like just an amazing teacher of graffiti. Um, and he invited me to come back. I think you can see the upper picture there. I'm in his room with his friends while they're drawing in their sketchbooks. And he, he explained to me about graffiti. I had never, I didn't understand that you could actually read the tags, for example. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that Dandi spoke with me was that he had clipped that clipping from the New York Post and pasted it into his black book, his notebook, and it had my name on it because in the background of that little girl on the rope swing was one of his uh, throw-ups or pieces. Mm -hmm and his tag that says CIA, which was crazy inside artists. <laughs> and so he, my name was, my credit was on the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Since we're journalism, right. I felt like we should, I should show the newspaper. Um, and so he knew that I wasn't a cop. <laughs> he un and also he knew that I had the ability to get him some fame, right. which was always right. something that graffiti writers wanted. So, um, after about a year of documenting parts of graffiti, he did allow me to accompany him to the yard where he painted this piece, and that's what mm -hmm. these pictures are. And meanwhile, I think actually Dandy might have introduced me to Henry, or he told me about Henry Chalfant's show, and Henry is also here Henry. in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Henry, uh, when Henry had a show at O.K. Harris, and I'm probably a year after that, we both thought it would be good to have a book, and then we decided to do a book together, and the book mm -hmm. turned out to be Subway Art, and that's wonderful. That's, <laughs> the rest that's, is history. That's that's amazing. <laughs> so. It's like he, like you know, obviously way before internet, like he tracked you down through the teeny tiny credit on the cover of the Post. You know, well, that you he had clipped the, remember, right. he three took me to his door. We just knocked on his door without any further right. introduction. And he had clipped this, he had this clipped that. Yeah. clipping, 1978, mm -hmm. um, but it was 79, I think, when I went to his door. Mm -hmm. and, and my name was on it. And he so, oh, you. Martha Cooper, he knew who I was. Right. And that was, a, I mean, we, we were way out in East New York, not at all near the Lower East Side where I had met this right. young writer so, so it's kind of chance kind of not chance you know it was a matter of following mm -hmm. up on something that interested me right um so 
that's I'm amazing. happy that I did. That's amazing. And then how many years did you spend like photographing with Dondi, would you say? Oh, the book Subway Art was published in 84. 84. So, you know, okay. about then, that's from beautiful. 79 to 84. Awesome. Okay, thank you. That was that's beautiful. I mean, so beginning kind of I got into this through the back door. Yeah. Not like oh, I'm going to go photograph hip hop. Right. Okay. Yeah. It happened very organically. Yes. In Haiti. Thank yes. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to move over and introduce Mel D. Cole. Um, Mel yes. is, uh, hello Mel, thank you hello. for being here. Thank you very much, um, appreciate it. I was really interested to find that you are a self-taught photographer. Yes. And award-winning photographer. Who, here. Who, right. uh, <laughs> and you moved here in 99 to go to college and you started shooting hip hop shows um, with a disposable camera sometimes, is that correct? Not sometimes, all the times. All the time. Yeah. And a lot of black and white. Yes. Also, mm -hmm. um, and you worked a lot with Common and Erica Badu, and there was was there like a famous show at SOBs that kind of set things off for you? I wouldn't say I was working with them. Uh huh. I went to a show <laughs> as a fan, okay. and I took this shot right here, uh -huh. which uh, at the time I wasn't thinking that oh I'm a photographer. I was like right. I'm a fanboy. I'm in the front row, like yeah, Common, <laughs> Badu. Oh, there's Questlove. These are all my heroes. Right. You know? This right. is why I want to you know, inspired to be around, but mm -hmm. I can't rap, I can't DJ, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be a fan. Like, right. I had a sign and everything. Like right. Electric had a Wire, sign. Hustle Flower. <laughs> it was my favorite album in the world. So wow. I went to the show and I took this photo, but got it developed at like CVS or something, one hour <laughs> photo, put it in the shoebox, Adidas shoebox, and then, you know, one thing led to another, and I was like, oh, I think I wanna be a photographer. Wow, yeah. okay. So that was kind of your, your gateway. Music, hip hop, Music yes. is your gateway, okay, I love that. And then you wound up shooting a lot of images for magazines like Herb Magazine, and yeah. how, did you, how did you get into, how did you go from that into going right into hip hop magazines? Like, how did you work your way into journalism, photojournalism for hip hop? Uh, being persistent, just mm -hmm. at that time, I guess it was the, basically, I guess a change of guard. It was digital photography was just starting. Um, I didn't really have the patience for film photography. Uh, like these two legends next to me, three probably, everyone up here shot filmed. But I started on film with disposable, um, but it just going to shows, there weren't many photographers shooting live shows at the time. Right. You know, it was just me. So mm -hmm. I would just go and act like I belong there and then <laughs> As word got out, you know, I had a blog called Village Slim at the time, and magazines would, uh, you know, reach out and, you know, want to hire me to shoot events. I did a lot of that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, one, li one thing leads to another, and you just be persistent and you right. get to capture moments of magic. I, I like mean, it's, I think it's, it's really amazing. Like the live stuff to me has so much energy, and it feels like you have this all access pass that happens so incredibly quickly yeah sometimes you gotta you know you force your way in let's see like mm -hmm. i mean i uh, live music to me is one of the best things ever i mean you can look at this shot here of ice cube mm -hmm. and some people might not think that was you know on stage but it is you know i chase the light that's mm -hmm. there and try to make sometimes portraits out of moments that you know most people wouldn't make portraits and the same thing with 21 savage but also, you know, I love the energy of a live show. Right. And, you know, I get to doc rock him stage diving. Like, who has that? I yeah. do. You know, like. I've never seen it. It's amazing. Like, no one's probably, you know, it's, but it's an, an amazing photo. And same thing here. Eric Badu is, she's about, this is at SOBs, and she's coming up the stage, and there's Common. And I just happened to capture that. And, mm -hmm. you know, and the list goes on. And being at the right place at the right time and having this access, but almost at the same time, like, not, you know, because sometimes I'm in disbelief that, you know, I was in some of these, not in, but at some of these magical moments. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It's a gift that. Uh, Thank just you. Just being, um, I think persistence and confidence is like a big part yes, of Yes, you have to and be. Then, yeah, definitely you know, confidence. And then you can sure. take a million pictures, but editing down to these specific shots is also. Yeah, you can just you imagine know. me making, putting, showing these. I mean, he <laughs> photos the other day, like, oh, what do I show everyone? What is, you so know, what, what, what can I show the people? Yeah. 
you sh showing us some beautiful things. My okay, so my really quick last question before sure. we talk to Sue and then Ernie is, how did you feel so specifically drawn to live hip hop shows? other than anything else well my like love for music my dad owned the record shop growing mm -hmm. up he's, he was also um, a concert promoter in syracuse new york where i'm originally from you know i saw you know the fresh fest and all that stuff hanging backstage with the fat boys and run dmc so it was always you know within me i grew up loving hip-hop from afar my goal was to always figure out a way that i can live in new york and be closer to it but like I said earlier, I can't rap. I'm, I, I can, but I'm horrible, you know. <laughs> and I tried DJing. I'm like, okay. Yeah. My dad was a DJ, DJ, so I was like, maybe I'll do that. Eh, not so good. So I don't break. I don't do graffiti, you know. So, you know, all of the elements of hip-hop, you know, I'm not very good at. But what I am good at is documenting it. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And... I got inspired through music because I wanted to be around some of the most magical, creative people mm -hmm. that uh, in my life that I inspired to be like. I wanted to be mm -hmm. great, just like them. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? I go be around greatness. Yep. I be in the same rooms as a Questlove, as a Black Thought, and let some of their you know, inspiration and magic rub off on me. And hopefully, you know, I always was like, maybe you know, I'm going to be like you, but different mm -hmm. in my space. Right. So, yeah. I can relate to that. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> yes. I like that. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right. So now I would love to chat with Ms. Sue Kwan. I'm going in alphabetical order, by the way, just so you know, <laughs> kind of. Um, so I've known our next panelist, Sue, since 1994, I figured out. So we're celebrating our 30th anniversary of friendship this year. Uh, I saw her work first in the source and vibe and uh, that's when I started to follow her and aka stalk her because you couldn't follow somebody like you can now online and uh, around that time is when I became an art director up at Sony and I knew someday I would find like the right project to hire her and work with her um, and before that uh, you started your career at the Village Voice and you were shooting everything from runaways to underground Jamaican nightclubs in Queens. And um, fast forward to hip hop times, and that's when she photographed many up and coming uh, rappers that we may have heard of, like Wu-Tang Clan or, you know, some, some other unknowns like Mob Deep or Fat Joe, you know, some new kids, on, new kids around. And of course, one of my favorites, De La Soul. And, and you have so many early, early pictures of everybody um, that is in a beautiful book called Rap is Risen, if anybody's heard of that book. <laughs> um, and you also shot a lot for rap pages as well. Um, and then during this time, Sue became really well known shooting hip hop and very trusted and loved and um, in the hip hop culture and in the art scene. And um, I think that's kind of really carried through over like the last 30 years is like something that we're going to talk about is like the um, familiarity and, and intimacy that you've built with a certain group of musicians at the time that's I think uh, not um, not always it doesn't always happen very easily so we don't I don't take that for granted and we'll talk about that a little bit so I'm going to jump into our question because we've got this image up on the screen that um, we're gonna we're gonna tell a story about but our first project landed us in Rikers Island and we're not we won't talk it's about that Rikers today Island. that's not this <laughs> project Hello. our first project we shot Freddie Fox and we went into Rikers Island together to shoot that um, I don't recommend it as a as, as a location. Um, after we got out of Rikers, I like to say that part though, after we got out of Rikers, we shot an album package for Cool G Rap called 456. And I just was wondering if you could take us through that shoot a little bit, like what you remember about putting a package together back then. You know, it was a little different where, um, you know, there weren't as many layers of people that we had to get things approved. We didn't have to present something already comped. You know, like nowadays you kind of have to comp it as what it's going to look like when it's finished before we even shoot it. We have to get things approved ab across the board before we shoot it. We basically had, 
you know, a lot more freedom in a way. So could you tell us a little bit like what you remember about us doing that shoot in 95? Um, well, first, one thing I'd like to mention is, you know, first part was that we had to lug these heavy portfolios around back then. I mean, they're right. portfolios <laughs> with your printed photos. Either you went to a dark room and printed or, you know, somebody did it for you, but that was your calling card. Like you didn't have, you know, I know people look at Instagram and get photographers that way, which, you know, mm -hmm. makes sense. But back then I remember lugging the book to Sony, like dropping it off, like, you know, hoping you get the job. A big <laughs> but, giant black. Yeah, and it's like so heavy. by but 24 it, it case. It probably weighed 10 pictures. pounds, because, you know, the paper. Mm -hmm. But that was the first process, I think, of getting that kind of a job, I remember. And then you, I remember you calling me, you know, that, hey, you know, he, you're approved, or, you know, G-Rap says you're in. And, and um, you know, and after that, uh, you know, you walked me through the brief of like what we're looking for. I remember we went location scouting together, I and mean, it was really a grassroots kind of um, process. I think you know there was no location scout. We went and rented a car, drove around Newark, drove around wherever. You know, then we picked locations. We didn't even have to show. I don't know if we showed them the locations. We didn't have to I think show we just said we're shooting anything. you here. <laughs> right. That it was just literally show up, and that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. um, I think I don't know if there was a stylist. Oh yes, there was a stylist, but he held us up. <laughs> We had to wait for the stylist to bring one coat, like in two hours, I remember. Mm -hmm. But it was very, um, even though he was a huge star at that time, it wasn't, you know, it was a very small team of people just kind of doing it, driving around and taking photos. Um, I do remember shooting it, then I think this was photographed another day on a video shoot. Right. Um, I think you're just like, oh, why don't you go down and try to get more photos? Mm -hmm. And this was just behind the scenes of the photo shoot. I'm sorry, video shoot. I wasn't, I was probably in the way of the director, probably hated me, but, um, <laughs> but you know, and I just, I got this photo. I mean, you know, you get a contact sheet, you pick what you like. I remember going to the dark room to print this and I was playing around with it and I couldn't get the top. I, for some reason I couldn't get that right. I mean, the, ne the negative has detail there and I couldn't do it, but I thought it looked kind of cool. So I printed it, went home, I faxed it, well, I don't know if, again, I'm dating myself, but if faxes were around back then. That was Raise your right. hand if you know what a fax is. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, good. <laughs> right. Just checking. So I, you know, that that was really cool and fast. So I faxed it to Michelle. Yeah. Just to show her the image, like, oh, look, this is another image I got on that's the how set. We would ha that's how we would have images. We would talk about images back and forth instead of, like, you know, you didn't have your phone to take it and, and, you know, text it to somebody, do you want this picture or that picture or email it or anything. So she would fax it to me, like, do you want this one? And I would, you know, call her. I would call her and say, yes, that one, please. <laughs> or say the number on the phone of the, of the image. The so fax she will be through in three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> she would, and I would wait by the machine for it to come feeding through, and I'm like, it's here. So when it came through, it looked like this, and when I saw it, um, I'm I'm gonna finish the story here. Yeah, because we're passing the mic. So end, when I got it, I you know this is where the I guess the idea came through. It's like, oh, fast life was the name of the single. Like, haha, very clever. You know, it's so we're so fast. We're faxing it, and we're just gonna use that for the cover. And I never thought it would get approved, you know, by anybody. And I, you know, you know, just designing it with like the little bits of type at the top, like an actual fax, because you know that's what faxes looked like the time and the date and some random numbers and and type and stuff and this little digitized stuff at the bottom because a fax is always you know a little janky at the bottom with stuff and that was it and they they actually printed it that way so it was kind of weird and i love though you know <laughs> the uh, faxing was fast back yeah then. faxing I mean, was very fast back then so we were making minutes. a very bold <laughs> statement about you know the quickness of our of our decisions, so thank you, Su Kwan, <laughs> for, for being so technologically for be, yeah, savvy. Yeah, for letting me like use your beautiful photograph in this insanely digitized way. You know, that could be a um, well. I liked. I mean, I liked considered the a travesty. It was. It was. It was diff You know, it just seemed more textural. It was cool. It was textural, <laughs> and it wasn't just a black and white photo. Right. It was cool. I mean, if you go and look at four, five, six, you're gonna s the cover. You're gonna see. Um, cool G Rap with Nas, who was super young, and it was before his, his first album came out, and Akinelli, in and we were locked in an illegal gambling hall in Newark. There's like so much to that story. 
that we're not telling. You know, that could be a whole other panel. We had to hide a gun. We were in a Winnebago. They were rocking the Winnebago. That's an, another panel all together it was with a PTSD fun involved. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. So thank you. And now I am going to introduce Ernie Panicoli, sitting at the far <laughs> right, my right, your left of the stage. Thank you for joining us. Um, I would consider this man an archaeologist of hip-hop photography and culture as he has documented some of the earliest and most vibrant images of hip-hop graffiti and the culture starting in 1973, I think, is when you started shooting. Is that correct? Um, you, Ernie is a hip-hop hall of famer a recipient of the Zulu Nation Human Soul Award and creator of The Other Side of Hip Hop, which is the best documentary in 2002. Did I get that right? Yes, thank you. Your work is featured in the Cornell University Hip Hop Collection, which is pretty world famous. Um, a fun fact that I read about you is when you were asked which of your photos is your favorite, you respond, my favorite is my next one. And I love that. I think that's beautiful. It's like your next picture is your favorite. So welcome. I hope, is this working? Yep. OK. I'm going to go stream of consciousness. And forgive me if I lose you on the trip. <laughs> but we have a time constraint. First, I'm a fanboy because I'm with Martha and Henry. That's, that makes my whole day. <laughs> Last night, I was on a panel, and Grandmaster Flash came up to me and apologized. I said, what are you apologizing for? He said, for 40 years of being disrespectful to you and telling you to stop taking pictures. I said, one day I knew you would come, and we hugged and we laughed, and Dougie Fresh was there, and it was a whole thing. <laughs> I was 14 years old, and I spent two days with Salvador Dali, and I knew I wanted to be an artist. I had no idea what an artist was or how that would happen. I couldn't dance, sing, do anything like the brother. I couldn't, you know, <laughs> you just know in your genes that that's going to happen, and it happened. And I spent my teenage years in Greenwich Village during the most politically, artistically, creatively powerful time in American history, and I met everyone. I spent time and became best friends with Richie Havens, met Jimi Hendrix, everybody. And it was just like art was surrounding me. Then I spent six years in the military. Then I came out and I had a family and I had to get serious. And somehow or another, I met people like Martha and Henry and I knew that that was there. Yes, I became part of hip hop. And in many ways, because I was 20, 30 years older, I became a voice. I joined the Zulu Nation, and I'll share something with you, just show you how quirky I am. <laughs> I became the Supreme Minister of Culture of the Universal Zulu Nation worldwide. And when the new decade began, the new century began, they asked me to go out to Queens because there was a militant group of Zulus who were about to break off from the organization and create something that was based on Moorish and just a much more militant thing. And they asked me to go out there. I went out there, I was by myself, and it's a dark night, and I go into this room and there's 75 brothers I don't know. And I looked and I said, I want tonight to give praise and glory and thanks to a brother who has always stood for justice, freedom, and taught us how to act, taught us, you know, I, they, they didn't know who I was talking about. And I said, please give it up for this brother. We just lost him. And everybody's looking at me, and it was Mr. Rogers from Sesame Street. <laughs> so for a second, there was no movement. And then all of a sudden, they were moving. I was like, whoops. And everybody gave me a three-minute standing ovation because I honored someone who had taught them how to be human beings. Mm -hmm. And we helped bring that group of Zulus back into our group. 
Also, one reason that I had access to all the rappers is because I was tight with the Fruit of Islam, the brothers from the Nation of Islam, because you know I understood and trained in martial arts. They trained in martial arts. So they were doing the security at all these clubs. And they knew when I went there, I wasn't going to mess with the woman. I wasn't going to be drinking or smoking or acting stupid or carrying weapons. So I could get into any club in New York. Also, I became a Zen Buddhist at 14. So that prepares you for anything. And it prepares you, even this photograph, which is crazy. I was walking down the street with King's son and Ice Cube and the police were walking past the police and back then he had a bad rep in the street so they were cursing at him because it was shift change. And one of the sergeants came out and told them to go on about their business. And I said, I wanna take a picture with the Statue of Liberty. He said, I ain't taking a picture with that pig. I said, no, our way. So he went up and choked the Statue of Liberty which fit. So this is how I, I conceive of things. This is how I think. And to me, hip hop is ancient. It's an ancient vibe. And people think that it's just rap music. It's so many things. This beautiful sister that I love so much does not want to be called a hip hop photographer. And I respect that. Because she understands how broad it is and how narrow we think of it. I love what I've done for the last 40, 50 years. I've loved the friendships. I've loved the camaraderie. And I've loved the fact that like Martha and like Henry, I've traveled all over the world. My passport is full because I've done shows. I just did a show at the Grammy Museum for five months. And before me was Bruce Springsteen and replacing me was the Beatles. Come on, you can't make this Pretty stuff amazing. up. That's crazy, all right? And amazing. I love what I do and I love my people and I always try to represent a positive, strong thing. In the past five months, I've been away from people. I've not been near people. I'm back out now. Last night was my first. This is my second. And I feel honored. And you see this man walking in here? He was the first one that recognized my voice, and he took me around the country doing lectures. So big props. Thank you. Love you. I have a book out now called Hip Hop at the End of the World. And I'm working on a book now called Stark, Kiss the Ring. And it's going to be like nothing that's ever happened before. It's 300 portraits of the greatest artists, greatest people. There's only going to be 100 books in the world. I'm working with Salam Remy and some other people. There's only going to be a hundred books in the world, and it's called Stark. And if I was you, I would keep my eyes on it because it's a wedding of three things that never happened before. Hip-hop, photography, and art. Peace and thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you. Can I ask you a quick question about this image yes, up here? Um, you mentioned that Ice Cube wanted to take a picture with the Statue of Liberty? No, he did not want to he take a picture with the Statue picture. of Liberty. <laughs> what he said was, I ain't taking a picture with that bitch. Okay. He was very clear. I said, okay. no, our way. And when I told him, he went up, and I got several. And this, to him and I, represent the hypocrisy right. of, you know, America, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. I don't have to... Got come it. to Columbia and teach Columbia about, you know, hypocrisy or, okay, okay so, uh, <laughs> so, okay, there, there was another image, yes, there's another image, um, that you shared with us of Lauren Hill, which I thought was really striking, um, can you share with us a backstory on this, yeah, please, because I was shot on 42nd fascinated. Street and 10th Avenue, we were shooting a video called If I Ruled the World with Nas. And we, you know how these shoots just go on for like six years it seems like. And she says, Ernie, please, let's go upstairs, get some air, I can't, I can't do this no more. So we went upstairs and we're standing there and there's all the scaffolding, it's by a lumber yard. And these little girls come out of school and one of them says, little chubby girl looked at her and says, 
damn, she looks like Lauren Hill. And the other girl said, nah, Lauren Hill's much prettier, and said it loud. So we were out there, and all of a sudden, Lauren just went away. She was there, but she was away. And I saw this incredible, that was shot outside using natural light. It was just a perfect image. And I shot it, and then when I was playing with it, I changed it to blue. Of course, everybody thought of it in terms of Avatar. This was 10 years before Avatar, and Avatar actually hurt my heart because it was so ass backwards and racist. But uh, this, this is one of my most beautiful images. And if you notice, sister, mm -hmm. wow. She, she, she always had a presence and a spirit and an energy. And I love her, and I love her mother and father. And it's strange, and I'll say something. Her mother and father were born again Christians, and her husband was a Rastafarian. So that's got to affect you. Mm -hmm. And growing up in, in, in Jersey, come on. <laughs> it's a lot of things. <laughs> I, I did want to ask you, though, Ernie, because, um, you know, in your photography, I noticed that there are a lot of images that have design to them, like this one, like where you made some, some like really definite design decisions, you know, where you're changing color or backgrounds or something. And, you know, I find that like really beautiful and interesting. And I'm wondering, like, you know, some things you don't touch at all and some things you do. And I'm wondering, like, what leads you to make those decisions and what makes them, you know, some you know, what makes you go that way with images like this? The truth is that I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather be like Martha, I'd rather be called a painter than a hip hop photographer or a photographer. Mm -hmm. I love painting. And I, drawing and painting was always my go-to. It just happened that I fell in love with photography. Mm -hmm. And hi photography fell in love with me and hip hop and one thing and another. But um, that's where this came from. And well, when you said earlier that you met Salvador Dali, right, but and then I saw this, it's just like yeah, it just kind of The thing about me. Salvador Dali is, you, you know, I tell you that, and it's, it's like telling you I met a unicorn. But the truth was, he was a showman. He was, he was an influencer. He was a, uh, I don't even know what they call it before any of them even existed. He used to be at the plaza and he'd come out and all day long he'd be doing press and he, uh, I, I'll tell you something funny that you appreciate. You go to some restaurants in that neighborhood and you'll see checks of his on the wall where he had a, a meal for like 20 people because he used to pay by check because he knew that they would never cast those checks. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. He was something, man, and I'm in a movie with him when I'm about 14, and he's walking down the street, and he's, he's got an ocelot, mm -hmm. which is like a tiger a or lion cat. something, <laughs> on, on a string, and he's got his arm around me. And I think he liked me just because I looked so stupid. I was like, <laughs> you know, it was like I, I couldn't believe I was near him. But he was always in New York, so if you were in New York, you could see him. And uh, I spent two days with him, and I believe it changed my life. That Zen Buddhism, uh, being best friends with Richie Havens when he was homeless, uh, being homeless, being in the military. There were so many influences that I can't even, but to get back to this, mm -hmm. it's the idea of painting, mm -hmm. painting. That's what, where I, I wanted to know. Um, okay, that's beautiful. Um, Okay, do, I don't know, do we have time to go another round of questions, or do we go, do you want to do question and answer in the audience? Q&A. Q &A? Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, f everybody, for your images and your stories, and I think we get to open it up now to the audience if anybody here has questions for anyone on the panel. So, there's a microphone in the middle. I guess you can just come up and uh, ask a question if you have one. And if you don't, I can just keep asking questions. I can pull my James Lipton questions out. <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? <laughs> yeah, you have a question? Do you want to come up to the mic? No, you're just going to talk real loud? Maybe someone can pass the mic around. Oh, we have, okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, hello. First of all, hello to all the panelists, and thank you guys for coming. 
I really appreciate all the education you've given us about the culture of photography as an art in hip hop and not just in hip hop in the world. Um, Miss Martha, how do you feel? First of all, I'm Kay Slay's niece. I officially go by Lady Cuts. And I want to thank you for the photography that you did of him. How do you feel now? I don't know if they told you, but it's going in the hip hop museum in the Bronx. Crime in the city, the, the double paneled arm picture. How do you feel about that? Um, flattered that a photo of mine. Oh, mine. Oh. I mean, the last thing I ever thought Here, how about this one? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, of course, back in the day, was I thinking that any of this was going to last? No. I, I had the opposite point of view. I was thinking, this is all going to die out, and I'm going to have the pictures. But I, I didn't think that we would still be talking about it 40 years later. So I'm flattered that people are still looking at my pictures. And it's, I'm happy if they want to put them somewhere. OK. Any other thing to the other panelists? And you, of course, Ms. Martha. Um, if you could define the work that you've done going forward to know where you are as an artist, where would you want to end up? And if you could have one word to describe your work, what would it be? One word? <laughs> are we? It, let's ask everybody this, please. It's a great please. question. Uh, one word. Um, history. Uh, you know, historic. Uh, two, can I have two words, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say historic preservation. OK. Let's just, because I think that, you know, it makes me feel as if I haven't been wasting my life. Anybody else have a word? Sure. Uh, hi. Uh, I think for me, um, one word to describe my work my, would be, mm, I think, in a way, unknown. Because I believe probably I'm the lesser known out of all of these photographers up here. Um, but also, I have my own lane as well. Because like Martha, I don't just call myself. I am a hip hop photographer, but I'm so much more than that. Like I was at the Capitol Building on January 6th, so you know, and I won photographer, press photographer of the year for my work there. So, but without hip hop, thank you. So, but without hip hop, I wouldn't have been a photographer. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say about myself. But knowing as well, so it's like I teeter this line. Like, I was a last minute addition, but I'm here and I'm happy for it. You know what I mean? Yes, if you want to. So, Check. one word, too. So. <laughs> um, I think along the lines of Martha, the same thing, you know, would be, you know, truth, document, you know, uh, the fact that we did all this work and that it just stands the test of time. You know that it, it that been preserved moments. I mean, I used to be obsessed with stopping time when I was younger, and um, I, I I think that's why I started photography. Um, I was always worried about time passing, so I thought if I take a picture, it's there. But um, preservation. Then. Yeah, so it's kind of like that. I think it's just because we, um, it's just a moment that will never you'll never get back again. But hopefully, it's always an honest and truthful moment too, and beautiful. <laughs> So I'm sorry, there's not really one word, I think. But I'm just yeah, that's, <laughs> I, that's a great question. <laughs> Life, truth, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, that is a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got a line. Hey. Oh. Next up. Next question. My brother. Right. How you doing? Peace, peace. Ramin, Beats, Rhymes, and Relief. Ernie, good to see you, sir. Um, my question to all of y'all is, uh, through your thoughts on mentorship and do you have an up and coming artist that we should be on the lookout for an up and coming photographer do you guys engage in mentorship how much uh, was that important to your careers flourishing 
and uh, how important is it for us to continue um, those type programs where we can lift as we climb. May, may I? Please. There's a young man in the front row here. I want him to stand up. You talk about mentorship, stand up. <laughs> stand your behind up. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Many of you know who he is, but may not know his face or his name. He's Steve Cartuccio, and he does concrete jungle sculptures, and he's done the Wu-Tang, Biggie, uh, Red Man, I can't remember all the people, but if you go to the website, uh, Concrete Jungle Studio, you'll be shocked at what you see. I saw his work and I was like, damn. And I reached out to somebody that connected me and he turned out to be a beautiful person on top of talented, because talented don't mean nothing. If you ain't beautiful on top of it, if your energy ain't right. So I work with him, I work with Rayon Richards, who went into a different lane. I met him at 17. He's doing a lane now where he does interiors of homes. And he's just incredible. But that's the two people I took under my wing. And of course, over the years, dozens of other people. You know, everybody was always welcome at my studio and I'd always show you love. And I try to teach you everything because I feel anything you keep for yourself is wasted. You share and build and that's a native thing where, you know, to share is, is to rise up and, and it's, and my work is political. So I get those people who have a sense of, I think the word that they use in New York is agency. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the word meant. I thought an agency was where somewhere you go to get an apartment. <laughs> but, uh, Ownership. Can I, uh, right. I wanna uh, just brief, briefly add to that. Can we put up my second, this stuff here? Yep. Um, here behind the scenes. Yeah, here we go to behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So to answer that question, I have a completely opposite answer to that because I'm super competitive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like when I started, like I didn't want to mentor anyone, and I, I asked this one photographer, say, "Hey man, uh, could you look at my work?" And he totally ignored me, and I took that to heart, and I used that as motivation to be greater than him. And I'm not gonna lie, like, and it's still this was 23 years ago. I've been a photographer, this, you know, that long time, and it. It still bites me that he didn't. And I held that and was super competitive until the pandemic. And the pandemic, was, I was like, huh, maybe I should start talking to other photographers. And I started this interview series uh, when live was popping during the pandemic. And I talked to different photographers that inspired me and, and up and coming photographers. And that led me to open up and be less competitive in the space. And also I started uh, doing photojournalism. I have a book called uh, American Protest, which is all about you know Black Lives Matter and Trump stuff and all this, all the craziness that was going on uh, after George Floyd was brutally murdered by the police in Minneapolis. We all know that story. So, um, long story short, yeah, completely opposite. But uh, I have been open to it, and I do a lot of work in soccer as well. And I found this young and up and coming photographer named Tisha Gale who shoots sports in Chelsea. If you know anything about soccer, they're a huge club. Uh, Chelsea supporter? All right, I'm not, but I work with them. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal for me. But uh, we found her and we did this story. We, uh, I host a show and we took her out to London. She had this big opportunity to shoot Raheem Sterling, also a female soccer star named Jess Carter. And we, and we also documented a big match versus Fulham. So I'm all about, you know, giving opportunities to people that, you know, like myself, that didn't have this opportunity. You know, I had to just fend for myself back then. No one was like, yeah, here you go. You know, let me mentor you. Yeah, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know her back then. So yeah, that's the answer yeah, to you do. my you question. Ask me, yes. You would have been spending a week in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sharing is caring. I'm just it is. I'm not going to be here forever. If I share with you, when I'm gone, you're going to be here. Absolutely. So that's yes. right. All you artists, unless you're sharing, you ain't nothing. Mm. Keep Truth. Thank you. Keep everything for yourself. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Come on, that's what it's all about. I love it. And anybody that knows me knows that's true. I've never said no to nobody. And you ain't supposed to. That's right. You have a gift, share it. That gift was given to you to be taken away. 
On that note, I just want to add something. Thank you. Because of and <laughs> I mean, when I first started going to the shows, you know, again, many decades ago, I see, you know, there weren't many women out there. I mean, I don't think there was another woman, you know, at the front show um, of the stage, I mean, sorry. And I see this tall gentleman, you know, from afar. And I'm like, oh, is he gonna mess with me? Like, cause, you know, usually people just try to get you out of the way and he comes walking over and he puts his arm around me and says, I got you. Like, if anyone messes with you, let me know. <laughs> and then from that moment, you know, I was hooked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a long time ago, yeah. probably, like, I think 80s. <laughs> I that with all the but you t thank you, thank you. Because I have a daughter, I have a wife, and you disrespect them, you're gonna have to deal with me. And I had that same attitude that women hold up the sky. So that was, that, that was, I was raised by a woman. Well, like thank, thank you. That's right. You have got to share. And, and any of you men that act picky, don't do that around me. And don't do that around brothers from the nation. And don't do that around the real Zulus. Don't do that. It's not, right. it's not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you Mark, for thank protecting thank Sue. <laughs> thank yes, you. Sir. I was I was asking Martha if she had a, a story or mentorship. Story. One. Um, in 2004, I did a book called We Be Girls, and it was about girls who break, because I felt that uh, I saw a few in Europe, and I realized that I had sort of not taken any pictures, I hadn't taken enough pictures of girls. And I worked with a German um, editor, writer, named Nika Kramer, and while I was working with her, um, she wrote the text for the book and, and did interviews. I realized that she every time she took a picture, it was really a good picture, and at the end, I gave her uh, my camera, and I said, wow. Nika, here, go be a photographer. Wow. Nika is now <laughs> an, a, a terrific photographer. You can see her picture she, on Instagram, Nika Kramer. Uh, last year we went to Brazil and Paris and New York and we had shows about breaking in all three places. We're trying to go to the Olympics next year wow. where breaking will be a sport. And um, Nika got to be very good with a drone and I wanted to learn how to use a drone. <laughs> so <laughs> I bought a drone and she was mentoring me <laughs> on how to fly this drone, and in the end, I decided that I couldn't do it, and I gave her the drone. <laughs> <laughs> I decided I was gonna kill somebody. But, um, so my mentee became a mentor to me, and, and she's an extremely successful photographer now, oh. in Berlin, she lives in Berlin. Wow, That's great. beautiful, thank y'all. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we have another question? We have yes. have one more? Oh, I'm sorry. Before you before you go, um, this person with the red hat in the second row, he he's been waiting. I'm sorry. Um, this question is for Mel. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I know you're up here for hip hop journalism and out Belgium. Yes. But I know when you went through national, um, you know, during the you know the black protests, George Floyd, January 6th, etc. And I was wondering, you know, which part of your portfolio are you most proud of? You know, you, one for your people or the one that was for your people? Uh, all right. <laughs> Good question. Did everyone hear what he said? He, 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 he basically asked, which part of my portfolio am I more proud of? Um, because, yeah, I'm known for hip hop. And like I said, I'm lesser known, like, out of this crew here, you know. But when it comes to photojournalism, um, honestly, I'll toot my own horn. I'm one of the, I'm, I'm one of the people in that world. And I rose up through that during the George Floyd times. I, my Instagram, at Melody Co, please follow me, um, <laughs> became one of the places to go to to see what was going on in the streets. So I, I have a couple of different audiences. So his question is, which one am I more proud of? And it was, I, would pro I love hip hop, and I love artists, and I love that stuff you know, to death. And like I said, it w I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for hip hop, but the most important work that I've ever done is the work that I've done, Black Lives Matter, photographing for us, when I mean us, for black folks, 
you know, being in the streets, being in danger. I've been arrested. I've been punched in the face. You know, like I was in these streets. I was at the Capitol building, one of the only black photographers, you know, there, um, you know, documenting what was going on. You know, that, that it's become my life where, you know, music isn't, documenting hip hop isn't that important to me anymore. I still do it. I was just with Kid Cudi, you know, last week, you know, but what's more important to me is documenting like all these important stories that's going on in the world. So. Thank you. Great question and answer. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, sir, for waiting. How you doing? So, uh, I do a lot of research on uh, photography. I curate a, uh, like a, a exhibition where artists remix their favorite album covers, right? So I look, I'm always looking at album covers and, you know, I came up in that kind of like Latin quarters era and uh, just looking at all the pictures and all the album covers and it kind of struck me that you guys are kind of like anthropologists in a real sense because you document the, uh, a culture you know, not too many new cultures have like just popped up like hip hop has. Um, and you kind of like sort of documented the early stages of a new, a new thing, right? Uh, do you guys consider yourselves anthropologists? Yep. <laughs> no, I don't, not really. I do, but but let, let the OGs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually studied anthropology. <laughs> I did graduate work in anthropology. So um, I do, yes, I think I come at it from an anthro. I thought I might have a career in, before I was gonna be a photographer, I wanted to work in an anthropology museum and I studied to do that. Um, I have a diploma in ethnology <laughs> and, and I was married to an anthropologist for 15 oh, wow. years. <laughs> so I was in a sort of <laughs> anthropology circle. I was an anthropologist's wife <laughs> for a while. So um, yeah, I do consider myself an anthropologist. Ernie? I did, I've done a lot of album covers. One night, 3.30 in the morning, my wife and I are sleeping, the phone rings, I pick it up. Who is this? Chuck D. What do you want? It's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> I want you to do my next four album covers. So I went from nasty to nice, and uh, I ended up doing four album covers, but one of them was the most seminal, and that was Apocalypse 91. Uh, yes. And yes, in a way, we are anthropologists, and yes, in a way, before you know it, that moment is gone, and that's the beauty, the magic, the spiritual power of photography. Never take it for granted. Somebody said, I'm gonna find a way to take and capture images. It's crazy, I've, uh, native-wise, I'm just like, I can't believe I can take a picture of you, and 40 years later, get an apology from Grandmaster Flash for all the years, he told me not to take his picture, and I took his picture anyway. And he hugged me and we laughed last night. But those pictures are history. The camera can be sacred, the camera can be magic, the camera can be communication, the camera can be political. This brother was there on January 6th. His images, whether it's Floyd or whatever, send out messages, so yes, it is part of our culture, it's part of our history, and it's a gift. All you photographers or wannabe photographers or so-called photographers, never, 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 never take that for granted and use it as what it is, a gift, a blessing, and a weapon. That's great. Yes. I think that's a great note for us to, to wrap up on, and I wanna thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. And um, thank you, everybody, for thank joining you. us today. Thank you. Appreciate all y'all. Thank you very much. Beautiful I got to go. talk we had. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Cool.